Yo, everyone, and welcome to Anime Fanfic for you. We're back with a new story of What If Issei got betrayed and become the Red and White Dragon Emperor God of Ashikabi. But before we start, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome contents. Now, let's start to part one. Chapter one: A new possibility. Underworld. Rizivan. Good job, my friend Sekar Yuite. You have played a very good game, although I expected it to be more fun. He said in a mocking manner. Ali. Shut up damn you still don't win Haidu let's finish off that damn one. They say. Come on, nothing will stop us, balance breaker, I shout, his armor appearing. Ali. That's how my rival speaks balance breaker, he said, his own armor appearing. Brizivan. Come on, let's play a little but don't forget my cute pet. He said, and a giant circle appeared, an amorphous creature with a grotesque and terrifying aura. They say. It can't be that's no, it can't be. Said in disbelief. Ali. You're an idiot because you released that thing. He said with great terror in his voice. Brizivan. Haha ha, that's the face I wanted to see ah I'm definitely getting horny a little more haha. Ha. He said, ecstatic about his grandson's terror. Drihiksa. Gruire. Was the roar that the creature let out, launching itself to attack the two boys who dodged since in addition to the creature's attack, Brizivan launched bursts of dark magic. Brizivan. Keep it up, entertain me said to create many magic circles and begin to attack, although some collided with the creature itself, they did not seem to do much damage. They say. We can't continue like this volley we must get rid of one of them, and the Trahiksa is not an option. He said, drawing his rival's attention. Ali. I know Haidu, let's start. He said so that both of them started chanting. Ali. I, I'm about to awaken. I am the white dragon emperor who will bring the law to darkness. I walk the path of domination with infinite destruction and through the imaginary dream. I must become a pure white dragon emperor. And I must make you obey the silver white illusions and the ways of perfect evil. Juggernaut Overdrive. They say. I'm about to awaken. I am the Sekar Yuite who has discarded the principles of domination. I will walk the path of justice, carrying dreams and indestructible hope. I will be the Crimson Dragon. And I promise all of you. I will show you the future that shines in the true crimson light. Cardinal Crimson Promotion. Thus, both young men changed to their most powerful armor at that moment and began to attack the creature, since what they were really doing was a simple distraction, since suddenly Vali indirectly attacked Rizavan, managing to damage him, and Issei distracted the creature. Buying a little time. Rizavan. It takes more than that to kill me, little grandson. Said mockingly, beginning to attack Vali, hitting several magical attacks, but they did not stop Vali, as he attacked ferociously while dividing his forces. Vali. We'll see about that, stupid old man. He said with great anger in his voice. Drahiksa. Gruer. The creature roared while charging a huge attack, and when he was ready he fired them, completely destroying a mountain that was in the area, it was as if nothing had ever existed there, the mountain was erased in such an unnatural way that a terrible it chilled the two young men, and excited the old man, while someone watching the fight could only be terrified. They say. Damn it. Screamed helplessly since no matter how much he attacked him, he resisted even with Ascalon, he barely caused any damage at this rate, we will not be able to end this. Ali. Mind, if Albion used that could we win. Albion. If Ali, if you use that, there is no doubt that you would kill him, but you would also die. He said, giving him the answer he wanted, but something else that Ali didn't care about. Ali. When that happens, Albion go with Haidu, he will take care of you and, as he did with your rival, he will carry your name high. I will make sure that my damn grandfather dies and weaken Trahiksa as much as he can, that way we will save Haidu. Albion. I will fulfill your request, you are right, I will go very far, although I would have liked to continue seeing your path. He said, denoting some sadness. Well, Vali, I grant it to you, use that for which I was a feared celestial dragon. Vali. Haidu. He shouted, drawing the boy's attention. Save them all. He said, launching himself into the attack against Rizavan, who was ready to use sacred gear cancel, but he never expected what happened since he stopped before reaching him, pointing toward him. Then towards the Trahiksa beginning to shoot a strange liquid from its arms, it was of an incredibly strong green color, that when it reached where Rizavan was this scream of terrible pain just like the Trahiksa. Albion. Divide 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 divide. The voice of the white dragon could be heard. Ali. Half dimension, he said, using his attack to divide the power of everything within his reach into one more. Haidu be happy. He shouted as he lost his armor and looked one last time at his friend and rival. They say. Vali, wait, what's happening, why are you telling me that? I asked, very worried. Greg. 
Ibo the Lucifer used Albion's poison, he sacrificed himself so that he could put an end to the damned pervert and weaken the beast. They say. No. No. Bali, stop. He screamed in desperation when he saw his friend give one last smile and close her eyes without falling, having died on her feet, and his body was filled with that poison. Greg. You have my respect. Said his rival's bearer as last words. They say. This shouldn't have happened, despite having been an idiot obsessed with battles, you could have had a family. He said with great anger. Drahiksa. Ruoer. Roared from the pain of the poison, drawing Issei's attention since Rizavan had died after receiving a large part of the divide that Vali launched, so that he could not survive the poison. Issei. I'll finish you off for Vali. Issei Dreg. The crimson red dragon that dwells within me, awaken from your dominion. The crimson heavenly dragon that I possess within me, arise to become king and roar. The jet black god of infinity. The glorious red god of dreams. Watch over the forbidden existence we will become that transcends limits. He will drown like the glow inside our hell. God Dragon Diabolos DXD. That was the chant that Issei's spirit shouted at him to say and at the end a huge and bright light illuminated the entire place and surprised the spectator who was crying for Vali's death but knew that he was about to be avenged by Issei, for which he only I was going to give him all the encouragement possible. Issei. This is the end. Greg. DDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD
Dot. They say. How will you achieve that? He asked, very curious about the counterproductive nature of his words. Azizel. You will no longer be in this place, I will send you to another reality, thanks to the fact that you possess the flesh and blood of great red in office you will be able to cross without many problems, I just hope this is enough. He said, opening a storage space inside the cell from which a large number of precious and valuable gems came out, as well as some ancient treasures. They say. What is all this for, father? Said very confused when he saw the large amount. Azizel. I don't know if the money here will be useful in the other world, so gems and precious stones always work. Be free in that world, live a quiet life if you want, that is my only wish that my son lives without regret or pain, you know. Vali always dreamed of getting revenge on Rizavan, and he finally achieved it. Don't blame yourself, the insurance company thought of something like that, and that's why they entrusted you to Albion, find someone who loves you, they didn't deserve you, son, they doubted you and didn't want to listen to you, so they happy without them promise. They say. I'll do what I can father. Said somewhat crestfallen with the last thing. Greg. Come on Ibo, don't stop at that, those who said they loved you only despised you, because they were told that you had killed someone who was always like an older brother, and they knew it, but they didn't hesitate one bit to make false accusations. Albion. If Haidu thinks about what I said there you could create the legend I told you. Said, very interested in elevating his name to a great legend. They say. If Vali told me to be happy and I will do that well then I will have to keep all this. He said looking at all the jewels, objects and relics. Greg. Just save them in the boosted gear or the divine dividing. Said and both sacred gear absorbed the items dividing the loot. Azazel. Also take this. He said, handing him a backpack with some clothes and valuables. In case the money works, fill the wallet. As for the phone, take care of it, it's my latest invention, and that one over there is the machine that opened a space for I entered another reality, he said, and Issei took out a box that had a red button that didn't look very good. I'm glad that you and Vali were my little ones. Issei. You were a great father, thank you for everything. He said ready to press the button and when he touched it a crack appeared in front of him, and before entering he looked at his father one last time, and resumed his path. Azizel. Be happy my little one. Said leaving the place without anyone noticing. On the other side of the crack. They say. Well I expected the invention to go wrong, but it seems to work. Said when he saw the place where he arrived being the outskirts of the city. Greg. Hey Ibo, I can't find even a trace of any supernatural being. He said as a warning. Albion. Although there are some strange signs that are linking to your soul. They say. What do you mean Albion? I asked a little confused. Albion. It's difficult, I don't know how to explain it to you, I just know that it's not a bad thing at the moment, don't worry about that, you should look for a place to stay and check if the money he gave you is of any use. They say. Yes, wait a moment, now that I think about it, if I want to study here, I will need several papers. Greg. How about you check the backpack the crow gave you? Said and he checked, finding some papers just in case of emergency along with a note. They say you never know if you will need some paper. So I made sure to make you some use as the phone too. Upload your information and don't be non-existent wherever you have arrived. Take care and be happy this is my last gift for you. I want you to know that I was always proud of you. They say. Well it's a good idea, it seems that Azazel planned almost everything except where I can stay. So young Issei began his new journey where the discoveries did not take long since Issei found out that that city was Tokyo, or at least that was how it was until a few years ago. And with that it was enough for him to check several places in the city, where he requested a room for at least a few days, and he began to tour it. Reporter. Continuing the financial news today, the CEO of the giant conglomerate MBI, Mr. Manaka. Said, drawing the attention of Issei who was interested in the news. Announced that his company acquired 80% of the shares of Shinto Tito, as a result the city council many disagreed. Issei. What kind of idiot buys a city? Asked himself and the two dragons agreed on something. Greg Albion. I'm sure he's just crazy. Both said in complete agreement. So they toured the city that was formerly Tokyo until they decided to take the train to see the views. They say. I think that must be the MBI building. He said, seeing a large building almost in the middle of the city. That guy really likes flashy things. Mind, I arrived in a very complicated world, I hope everything doesn't get complicated. Before starting to live here. Greg. Well that will be difficult, I will be asking you to have a good life Ibo. Albion. I think the same with that crazy guy on television, you never know what he plans to do with the city. Maybe we should go somewhere else. They say. It wouldn't be best for us to stay, I don't want to go too far for now. He told them in his mental space while he was getting off at a station, and as he was getting off he felt some strange presence nearby, in addition to an explosion that alerted him. Pay attention guys, there seems to be problems. Dot. 
get out of the way. Said a voice that caught Issei's attention, who turned to see where that voice came from. Please step aside. She said as she fell from the sky and Issei jumped carefully to catch her and cushion her. Her fall. There, there I think it was too high to jump from there. She said while she was on Issei's chest who caught her. Issei. Hey, are you okay? He asked very worried and she looked at him. Ah, thank you very much, you absorbed the impact, right? He said with a cute smile while looking at Issei. Issei. Yes, I'm glad you're fine. Said when he noticed that the girl was fine until he felt a pull that called him towards the girl, and she felt it too. Careful. She said, moving Issei away with her from an attack that she noticed and sent them flying a little, and when they both got up quickly. It's useless to run. Said a voice from the roof of a building. Fight with us. Said the other girl who looked a lot like the one who attacked them. Issei. Hey, attacking indiscriminately is not good, especially in a public place. He said, scolding the two girls. I won't fight. He said seriously, standing in front of Issei. Even if you don't want to he said, and purple rays came out of the hands of both girls. Issei. What is that magic? Said somewhat curious. Greg. Link, no Ibo, they generate it naturally, there is no magic in that. Albion. Link yes I do, but I can split it if it's energy, so I'll help you when you need it. We will fight. They said, jumping from the roof with their attack ready. Issei. If that's what you want, let's do it. He said, ready to fight, but the girl he had caught took his hand, quickly taking him away from the place. Hey, wait, there's no reason to run away. He said, but she continued running. Wait. Damn. They both said when they reached the ground, watching her walk away with Issei. Issei. Stop calm down. Said trying to stop the girl, but it wasn't working, so he decided to just let himself go waiting to see where it would take him. Issei's room next morning. Issei was sleeping calmly in his large bed in his hotel room, where he would stay a few days before looking for a house. When he finally woke up he felt an extra weight on him, and when he opened his eyes he found that girl uncovered, so he he covered her with the blankets so she wouldn't catch a cold, although that caused her to wake up. R oh I'm a very sleepyhead and I ended up falling asleep here, she said while rubbing her eyes, and Issei looked at her calmly. Issei. Hello, good morning. Said looking at the girl who was looking at the bed as it was very comfortable. Oh, good morning, she said, sitting on the bed to begin taking off the shirt that Issei lent her as pajamas. Thank you for lending me clothes to sleep in. She said, uncovering herself and showing her breasts, so Issei just looked away. I'm really sorry. I even used your bed. He said and she noticed that he didn't say anything. Ido, Issei-san. She said a little worried, approaching on all fours where he was. Issei. Oh sorry, I let you change, let me know when I can come in. He said, leaving calmly, although the two dragons laughed a little at him, but Drake knew how chivalrous and kind his bear was, and he would never look at a woman that way. Unless I have his permission and this was not the case although the girl was confused. Issei. She is very beautiful. Said, unable to get her beautiful image out of his head, plus something was calling him towards her. Greg. Well I don't know about human standards, but I guess she's cute in her own way. Said encouraging his partner. Albion. Well, leaving that aside, I can feel that something in her is calling you Haidu. I don't know what it is exactly, but I will tell you that it is something quite strong and unbreakable. Issei. If I understand what you're talking about, my heart beats hard when I'm with her, I know it's love, but I just met her, and I already feel this way, it's very strange. He said, very confused, but a memory came to his mind. Memory. Far away path. The girl who had taken Issei had finally stopped somewhere where she was breathing heavily from all the way she went. We should be fine here, if I was that tired we traveled a long distance she said, and Issei was lying on the ground full of dirt while looking boredly at the place I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She said sitting next to him while she looked at a river. I really regret having involved you in this, I wonder why, if I ran away alone there was no problem, but I ended up taking you with me. Issei. It's okay, don't worry, you just wanted to protect me, thank you very much, Ido. He said when he thought that he didn't know the girl's name. Ah, sorry for telling you so late, my name is Musubi, she said, getting up from the place where she was sitting and bowing. Issei. Nice to meet you Musubi-chan, I'm Issei Haidu. Said also introducing himself. Musubi. Issei-san, I want to thank you again for saving me. Said giving another bow. Issei. Don't worry about that, I'm glad you're okay. He said and his heart beat along with the girls, but she was falling to the side, and Issei quickly caught her. Musubi-chan. Are you okay? She said looking at the girl while Drag and Albion checked her condition, discovering something quite interesting. Later hotel room. 
Issei took the girl to her room, but not before buying something to eat, the quickest being about 20 hamburgers since Issei had to eat a lot, although of those 20, he only ate 8 since all 12 were devoured by Musubi, although he ate the last 2. Taking small bites of one and then another. Issei. Thank goodness you were just hungry, I was worried. Said quite relieved that she was fine. Musubi. Really, really you saved me Issei-san. She said while crying and having her cheeks stuffed with the hamburger. Although you saved me. Issei. Don't worry about that just enjoy the food. Said calmly with a smile. Musubi. Yes, thank you very much. Said continuing the meal and Issei just looked at her. Issei. Mindfully, it's strange that she wears Maiko clothes, although it's even more strange that those two girls were chasing her, and the whole trip she did with me on her back, she's not a normal human. Greg. You are right about that, but there is no magical or demonic angelic trace of anyone we have met. He said, ruling out the possibilities. Albion. The truth is we don't even know if she is human, so we know those two girls could create those attacks, thanks to their own energy without the need for magic. Issei. It seems that we ended up in a more complicated world than it seemed. Said until Musubi called him. Musubi. Issei-san. Said, pulling the boy out of his conversation. Issei. Yes, tell me Musubi-chan. Said looking at the girl who was already down half a burger of each. Musubi. Actually. He said and then told him his situation. Issei. Don't you have a place to stay? I ask a little worried. Musubi. That's right if you don't mind, could I stay here? She said, quite embarrassed, not being able to look at Issei's face. Issei. You can stay, but I will only be in this room for a little while, then I will look for a place to stay, but when I leave, why don't you come with me, and we will look for a place to stay. Yusubi. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. He said very happily. Issei. By the way, Musubi-chan, who were those girls that were chasing you? Asked a little curious but she approached him. Musubi. Issei said I feel like you could be my Ashikabi she said while her cheeks were a little pink. Issei. What is an Ashikabi? I asked, very curious. Musubi. Well I've been looking for one for a long time. He said not answering the question but took Issei's hand. For those precious undiscovered people, we were born for all the Ashikabi. He said, further intriguing Issei who didn't understand. To guide them to the distant heaven, she sat and put Issei's hand on her chest, making him feel the beating of her heart, so he looked into her eyes. Feeling how their hearts were called by each other. End of memory. Musubi. Issei-san. Said calling the boy who entered the room with a changed Musubi. Issei. I see you finished changing. Said calmly. Musubi. I am sorry. She said surprising Issei by not understanding why she was apologizing. Was I very indecent? She asked a little worried. Issei. No, don't worry, just that that's something you should only show to your partner. He said a little sadly when talking about it, remembering the girls who said they loved him. But don't worry, I think you're very beautiful. He said, making Musubi happy. Dot. Musubi. I see, I'm glad you think I'm beautiful. She said with a cute smile and slightly rosy cheeks. Issei-san. She said calling the boy. Issei. Yes, tell me Musubi-chan. Said a little worried that she might feel bad or something. Musubi. I'm very hungry. Said and Issei smiled amused. Issei. I'm hungry too, let's go eat. Said so that they both left the room to go somewhere to eat where after eating they were both quite satisfied. Outside the restaurant. Musubi. It was delicious. Said very delighted by the food. Issei. I'm glad you liked it. He said, very happy for the girl. Even though you only ate 12 dishes, I'm sure you don't want more. He said since he ate almost 20. Musubi. I'm not fine. Issei-san, let me make you something to eat tonight. Said, very excited to be able to do something for Issei. Issei. Are you sure? Musubi. Yes, expect something very incredible. Said very happily. Issei. I'll be looking forward to it. She said with a smile. In that case I'll go to the supermarket to buy some things because you're not ahead of me. Do you remember the way? I asked and she answered immediately. Musubi. Yes. Said and nodded. Issei. Well, see you in a while. He said to start walking. Mind, it may not be so bad after all. He said as he enjoyed the girl's company although he didn't quite understand why he felt so attracted to her. She. Greg. Maybe he is your soulmate, although it would be strange if your soulmate is in a different world than yours. Albion. Maybe it's destiny hide you for now enjoy it. Here you are, little one he said, giving a balloon to a girl. Here. He said, handing over a flyer and Issei arrived at the place. The Don Mendez family restaurant in front of its grand re-inauguration today. We are waiting for you. Please come. 
she said, catching Issei's attention, who looked at them. Issei. Wow, that's you. Said and they looked at him. Ah, you're the boy who was with that irritating Sekere. She said, but when she saw the boy something called her to his side. Issei. And you are the girls who were just looking for a fight. He said and then looked at them. Oh well I must say that you look very cute in that uniform. He said making both girls blush. Whwh what are you supposed to be saying Baka? She said quite blushing. Where is that Sekere? She said, changing the subject, but her blush didn't go away. Issei. Why should I tell you for a moment, what is a Sekere? Said in Musubi's voice was heard behind him. Musubi. Issei-san. He said, turning the boy around, who became worried. I forgot to ask you what you would like to eat. Issei. Wait, Musubi-chan, stay there. He said, surprising the girl and the other two prepared their attacks. What a pity that you met us twice in two days. He said while holding his sister's hand. Dito is small, right? He said, the rays emanating from his hand. Musubi. It's you too. Said quite surprised. You're very slow. She said, launching her attack against Musubi and Issei jumped, pushing her and receiving the attack. Not what I did. She said, very worried. Musubi. Issei-san. Said very worried about him, and when the attack ended Issei was normal. Issei. I hoped he was stronger. Said, not being very affected by the attack. Thank goodness I thought I had hurt you she said, somewhat relieved. I thought he would be dead thank goodness. She said somewhat relaxed when she saw that he was fine, although they were preparing to launch their next attack, and Musubi was on guard, but they launched their next attack, and Issei once again stood in the middle. Issei. I'm sorry, beautiful ladies, but. He said, appearing the division glove that now worked normally, thanks to the help of Albion. Albion. Divide divide divide. Their voice was heard and the attack they launched disappeared, surprising the three. Musubi. Issei-san. Said looking at the boy who was protecting her. Issei. It's not okay to attack other beautiful ladies. He said, making the two girls blush. And much less will I let them hurt Musubi-chan. He declared loudly and with great confidence and Musubi's heart beat harder than before. Why are you protecting her? She said, approaching him while her heart beat faster and faster as she got closer to Issei. You are not as Ashikabi but you could be. She didn't finish because of how nervous she was when approaching him. Only apart from her and then we and you can. She said, preparing an attack to attack Musubi who looked at Issei with desire and love. Musubi. I, why am I? He asked himself, not understanding the feeling he had in his chest, and because he couldn't stop looking at Issei, and he didn't want to attack the two girls in front of him, feeling something that called him next to him. So he just turned around and carried Musubi running towards an alley. Wait, no, don't go, she said when she saw the boy running with Musubi in his arms, which made her angry. Wait that's not fair I didn't finish as Issei ran at high speed. Don't go, you're my Ashikabi, she said, not wanting him to leave. We have to catch up quickly if we finish her off we will be her Sekere. Yes, Hibiki, you surround the place. He said and they both divided up. Ali. Sensing that they were no longer following, Issei decided to stop since Musubi was breathing hard and Issei was very worried that something had happened to him. Issei. Musubi-chan, are you okay? He asked very worried, approaching the girl, and she threw herself at him. Musubi. What should I do? What should I do Issei-san? He asked while his cheeks turned red and his heart beat hard. My body is getting hot he said and took Issei's hand, placing it on one of his breasts. Issei. Musubi-chan, calm down, what's wrong? Said very worried since that was not normal. Musubi. Issei-san. Said as she was closer to Issei's face, and she held Issei's hand tightly making him dive deeper into her chest. I I. Issei. Musubi-chan. Said as he saw her eyes that reflected love, and he began to let himself be carried away by that warm feeling he has when being close to her. Hibiki. You won't escape from us. Said, appearing at the scene. Hikari. Stay away from her, you will be ours. Said while preparing her attack but Issei and Musubi were not listening, and their faces were getting closer and closer. Issei. Musubi-chan. Said approaching her. Musubi. Issei-san. Said and approached in the same way. Hibiki. No Hikari, I wanted to be the first. Hikari. I won't be the first. Said running to avoid the kiss, but she didn't arrive in time since both connected their lips with each other and transmitted a warm and pure love. Hikari Hibiki. Knew oh I wanted to be the first. Said both when a pink light was present in the place, and when Musubi came out of the kiss, beautiful wings spread on her back, looking like something spiritual or astral. Hikari. Okay, I'll be the second. 
said walking where Issei was, turning her face to give him a kiss which he reciprocated, and they were filled with many feelings that made his heart happy, and in the same way some of the purple ones spread on his back. Number 11 Hikari I will be yours for all eternity. Hibiki. That's not fair. Said running to the place and kissing Issei which transmitted many feelings to her, an incredibly pure love that she could not explain, and in the same way some wings appeared, these being a slightly reddish purple. Number 12 Hibiki take care of me from now on. Hikari. Well dear we would like to stay with you, but we still have work we will look for you later, so when we see each other she was trying to speak, but she was very nervous. Hibiki. What Hikari means is that you pamper us a lot. She said with a huge blush. Yusubi. Stay away from Issei-san. Said, drawing the attention of the three. Hikari. Wow you are suddenly very determined. Said when she saw the girl who had stood up after being winged. Hibiki. We won't walk away he's our Ashikabi too so hang in there. Yusubi. If they don't let him. Hikari. If we don't let him, what will you do? She said and she launched herself into the attack, and Hikari created a wall of energy to stop the blow. It's not bad at all, but it's not enough when she gave me my wings she made me stronger. She said resisting. The attack very easily and at the end they only climbed to the top of a building. Hibiki. Honey, we have work to do, we will look for you later, we hope you will take care of us. Hikari. We will miss you, but we promise that we will give you a lot of love, darling. Said and so they both left the place, leaving Issei with a huge doubt as well as Musubi. Issei. What the hell just happened and why do I feel great warmth in my heart? Said while holding his chest where his heart was beating intensely. Abandoned alley. Hibiki. Ah, I don't want to get away from my love. Said very tired and sad. Hikari. Me neither but we have to work, I'm so upset. Now they have a teacher, why do they work for him? Hibiki. Hamura. Hikari. Your disgusting thing, are you watching us? Hamura. Why do they help catch the ones that don't have wings? Better just go to their teacher, that idiot who gives them to catch the others. Hikari. Shut up, it was just so he wouldn't scare us, but now we have our beloved Ashikabi, we'll go out after finishing work. Hibiki. Just leave us alone. We will no longer attack the others, we already have him she said, very blushing but happy, and Hamura approached them. Hikari. What do you want to fight? She said, getting on her guard but feeling very worried. Hamura. If you want it. Said, her fire attack appearing, scaring the two. Hibiki. This is bad. She said very scared. I don't want to be cold again now that I found my Ashikabi. Hamura. I'm surprised you and that girl found your teacher, I'm not interested in fighting with Sekirei's with wings. She said, disappearing her attack and leaving the place. Hikari Hibiki. Ah. Sighed in relief as they saw Hamura retreat. Hikari. Thank goodness I didn't want to die and no longer see my love. Hibiki. Let's try with the one we have in our sights, and when we finish we can go with love, and that he pampers us. Also now we also participate in this game the city is a battlefield, and we must protect love, although it is more possible that he protects us. Said very happy to say and think about that. Hikari. Although I don't like leaving Akarino with a newbie, we have to work for him for now. Ali. Yusubi. Are you feeling well Issei-san? Asked kindly, approaching the boy. Issei. If I'm fine Yusubi-chan, thank you for asking, tell me how are you? You didn't get hurt, right? I asked just as worried about the girl. By the way, who are you? I asked curiously. Yusubi. We are Sekere. Said and he did not understand anything at all, but in the same way he felt happy to have Musubi by his side, so after some shopping the two returned to the hotel room, where Musubi began to prepare the food that he had given him. Promised to Issei. Hotel room kitchen. Musubi. The food will be ready soon. Issei. Yes, thank you very much Musubi-chan. He said and she smiled happily, continuing with her thing. Mind, this is actually something nostalgic, only this time, strange as it may seem, I feel that she transmits all her love to me. Greg. That's normal when you kissed her a kind of bond united your heart with hers. Albion. Well, that bond or connection already existed, but with the kiss it became stronger, and so did those other two, even though they are far away, I feel like they are united to you Hayadu. Issei. You know, you can call me Drag or just call me by my name. Albion. Yes you're right Issei MMM it's strange, but hey, I'll get used to it. Issei. If that's the way it's better, welcome to the Albion family. Greg. You know Ibo, I still wonder what this Sekirei thing is, curiosity is eating away at me. Said quite interested. Issei. I would also like to know since in my eyes Musubi-chan, Hikari and Hibiki are like normal humans. Was thinking until suddenly the TV in the room turned on by itself. So so Taka so a voice was heard on the television that caught Issei's attention. Issei. I didn't turn on the TV. He said a little confused. 
Well I'll just turn it off. He said taking control, but a voice stopped him. Wait. Don't turn it off. He said stopping Issei who looked at him seriously. Congratulations, you have been selected as a partner by several Sekirais, he said, and Musubi arrived. Musubi. Professor. Said when he saw the man on the screen. Issei. Do you know Musubi-chan? I asked while looking at the girl. Musubi. Yes, he is the teacher, my boss. If you don't recognize me you should read the newspapers, hi to Issei, he said, and Issei was confused. Issei. You know, I recently arrived in the city. Well you're right about that, but I'm quite famous even abroad. Issei. Yes, yes, whatever you say, talking television. Said mockingly. The haha you're very funny boy, well I'll start the Sekirei project, it's the name you're currently playing under. Issei. And they continue with that Sekirei thing. Said and the man on the television, Minaka, began to explain what the game was about. Tell me, did you understand? Issei. Yes in other words Musubi-chan, Hikari and Hibiki secretly fight with the other Sekireis, and I am their fellow Ashikabi. That's right Issei Kunhihaha. He laughed in a relaxed manner without any kind of mockery. Issei. And why are you telling me this now? Because this is a top secret project, and now that you know, even if you don't like it, it's your duty to keep the secret. Issei. I see. Said calmly and calmly. In case you say something, my company MBI will use all its power to do bad things while well, I'm very busy, I'll leave you, well stay healthy number 88 Musubi-kun, and take care of number 11 Hikari-kun and number 12 Hibiki-kun. Musubi. Yes, professor. Said very cheerfully and Issei was only calm because if they did anything to him he would destroy everything he sent him, and that was what he thought until someone knocked on the door. Issei. I'm coming. He said, and upon opening he found a well-dressed man carrying a box. What do you need from me? He asked in a kind manner, and the man gave him a box and then closed the door. Musubi. Ah Issei-san is my spare clothes. Said very happily and he handed her the box. Issei. Oh well it's good that you have more clothes later when we have a house how about we buy more clothes. Musubi. Issei-san. Said, drawing the attention of the rambling boy. I will fight for you Issei-san. We will definitely win and we will go to the distant heaven together. She said very excited and enthusiastic and Issei did not understand what he was talking about, and the truth is the only thing he wanted was to be with her. Next morning. After a few hours of searching for a house, no one received him because thinking that he was just a boy with no money or coming, they rejected him when he was looking for a house to live. Issei. This is 15 of those who reject us just because I look too young or they think I'm poor. Musubi. Looking for a house is very difficult said while walking next to him. Issei. Money is not a problem and I don't have family here. He said, a little tired and not knowing what to do. Well, we just have to keep trying, let's go Musubi-chan. They continued like this for almost the entire day until they stopped at a park to rest. And then go to his hotel room. Ah 30 different places and all the same. He said both tired and angry and Musubi looked at him sadly until it started to rain, being noticed by both of them. Here, Musubi-chan. He said, putting his sweater next to him. Girl so that she wouldn't get wet, but she saw how he got all wet and just looked down. Musubi. Issei-san. Said looking at the boy who was getting wet in the rain. Issei. Is it so difficult to find a home where you can be happy? He asked no one in particular, but Musubi was very confused. I guess I'm not made to be happy or find a new home, even those who said they loved me and loved me only doubted me. And they threw me away for something I didn't do, I can't take care of you properly by giving you a nice home. Musubi. Issei-san, the moon is very beautiful tonight, he said, trying to lighten Issei's weight. You know, I like you a lot Issei-san, being with you is wonderful, and I think those two will think the same, you are our special person. She said approaching Issei who looked at her as she approached, giving him a kiss full of love, and her wings came out momentarily illuminating the place. I will do anything for you, I will remove the clouds, and I will go to the moon, and one day we will be able to reach the distant sky for the contract I have made, my fist will destroy any danger against my Ashikabi. He said. Beginning to shine in a pink light. Well, let's go. He said, taking Issei's hands, beginning to spin and in that spin a tornado formed that I lift them through the sky. I will tell you a story from a long time ago, in ancient times the gods lived in a land called Takamegahara, it is said that the stone ship of the gods once landed here, loaded with treasures, however it is just an old story, just an ancient myth, with no records in either the Nihin Shoki or the Kajiki, despite that, a new myth has begun. 108 Sekere have dispersed. The Sekere must fight for their Ashikabi that they themselves have chosen, and the last one left will guide their Ashikabi to the distant heaven, where they will obtain the destiny of the world. Thus both Issei and Musubi arrived in the sky where the moon shone brightly. So let's let the new myth begin. 
The beautiful story of war. The miraculous love story. Darling. Yusubi. I told you, the moon was beautiful, right? They say. No more than you. Said with a smile. Mind, that day where they falsely accused me and then simply threw me away was the beginning of my real life, where on the second day I found three girls who, by kissing me, repaired a little of me. Broken heart, Musubi, Hikari, Hibiki it seems that I found those who truly love me. Chapter 2. The truth hurts, and a new home. The XD world. Serzich's. In the end he escaped, he knew he was a damn murderer. Said in the middle of a meeting. Auden. Watch your words, Lucifer child, they didn't even deign to check if it was true. Bajuka. It wasn't necessary, we saw all that flash, no one, but the Sekar Yuite could have casted. Serafal. I thought he was someone good sniff, and to think I wanted to marry him. Isaka. Me too, but I turned out to be just an idiot dominated by power and jealousy. Zeus. He is loose out there, and it should be our highest priority to find and eliminate him. Michael. Ah no one will change Azazel's mind, but don't tell them what happened. Said a little tired of the accusations. Azazel. Yes I will but until the others arrive said waiting for certain groups that didn't take long to arrive. Rias. Ani Sama has arrived, I have tried to search for him with the pieces, but I have not found a single trace, so it is better if he is dead, I can add someone I trust to my nobility. Sona. But anyway, we will have to look for him so that he can fulfill his punishment, Rias. Said while adjusting his glasses. Azizel. Everyone shut up. He shouted with great anger, surprising everyone. You really believed in that stupidity, it seems like you don't know him. My little one gave everything for you and ended up with that damn creature that killed father. Odin, help me show them what happened, he said, and the Norse god approached him to touch his head from which a projection of the fight came out. Fight. They say. We can't continue like this volley we must get rid of one of them, and the Trahiksa is not an option. He said, drawing the attention of volley who turned to look at him. Volley. I know how I do, let's start. He said so that both of them started chanting. Volley. I, I'm about to awaken. I am the white dragon emperor who will bring the law to darkness. I walk the path of domination with infinite destruction and through the imaginary dream. I must become a pure white dragon emperor. And I must make you obey the silver white illusions and the ways of perfect evil. Juggernaut overdrive. They say. I am about to awaken. I am the Sekar Yuite who has discarded the principles of domination. I will walk the path of justice, carrying dreams and indestructible hope. I will be the crimson dragon. And I promise all of you. I will show you the future that shines in the true crimson light. Cardinal Crimson Promotion. Thus, both young men changed to their most powerful armor at that moment and launched themselves to attack the creature. Everyone looked impressed at their bravery, although they were waiting to see the moment in which Issei kills Vali. Brizavan. It takes more than that to kill me, little grandson. Said mockingly, beginning to attack Vali, hitting several magical attacks, but they did not stop Vali, as he attacked ferociously while dividing his forces. Vali. We'll see about that, stupid old man. He said with great anger in his voice. Trahiksa. Gruer. Roared the creature as it charged a huge attack, and when it was ready it shot them, completely destroying a mountain that was in the area, it was as if nothing had ever existed there, the mountain was erased in such an unnatural way that it scared everyone. All those present since that would have discouraged them all from fighting against that creature. They say. Damn it. Screamed helplessly since no matter how much he attacked him, he resisted even with Ascalon, he barely caused any damage, surprising everyone when they saw how Issei never backed down, even after seeing such an attack. Ali. Haidu. He shouted, drawing the boy's attention and surprising those present. Save them all. He said, launching himself into the attack against Rizavan, who was ready to use sacred gear cancel, but he never expected what happened since he stopped before arriving. He pointed towards him and towards the Trahiksa, beginning to shoot a strange liquid from his arms. It was an incredibly strong green color that when he got to where Rizavan was, he screamed in terrible pain just like the Trahiksa, which surprised everyone in the room. Albion. Divide 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 divide. The voice of the white dragon could be heard. Ali. Half dimension, he said, using his attack to divide the power of everything within his reach to one more. Hi do be happy. He shouted as he lost his armor and looked one last time at his friend and rival, and everyone looked with concern. They say. Volley wait what's happening why are you telling me that? He asked very worried and everyone looked expectantly. Greg. Ibo the Lucifer used Albion's poison, he sacrificed himself so that he could put an end to the damned pervert and weaken the beast. They say. No. No. Volley, stop. 
He screamed in desperation when he saw his friend give one last smile and close her eyes without falling having died on her feet, and his body was filled with that poison, and everyone was in disbelief of what was happening in front of him. Them. Bragg. You have my respect. Said his rival's bearer as his last words. Issei. This shouldn't have happened, despite having been an idiot obsessed with battles, you could have had a family. Said with great anger, and everyone looked at the great anger and sadness that he had in his eyes. Prihiksa. Ruoer. Roared from the pain of the poison, drawing Issei's attention since Rizavan had died after receiving a large part of the divide that Vali launched, so that he could not survive the poison. Issei. I'll finish you off for Vali. Issei Drag. The crimson red dragon that dwells within me, awaken from your dominion. The crimson heavenly dragon that I possess within me, arise to become king and roar. The jet black god of infinity. The glorious red god of dreams. Watch over the forbidden existence we will become that transcends limits. You will transform like the glow inside our hell. God Dragon Diabolos DXD. That was the chant that Issei's spirit shouted at him to say and at the end a huge bright light illuminated the entire place, and everyone looked with enormous surprise, as the armor changed and immense power seemed to emanate from it. Issei. This is the end. Greg. DDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD
Musubi-chan, are you okay? He asked, very worried about the girl, and she looked at him. Musubi. Yes, I'm sorry. Said very sad until a voice called them. Bido, she said, drawing both of their attention. Who are you? Said a beautiful woman who was wearing a pretty kimono, but that beautiful woman felt a slight pull, calling her to the side of the young man in front of her, and in the same way Issei called her. Felt. Issei. Sorry for our sudden appearance. Said without getting up since his back hurt a little, and this was noticed by the woman who was quite worried. Are you hurt? She said very worried. Musubi. Issei-san. You got hurt protecting me, she said, very worried about him as she stood next to him. Issei. It's okay Musubi-chan, this is nothing if you're fine. He said with a smile. But how noisy, is there anyone there? He said opening one of the sliding doors of the house. He said and noticed both boys plus Issei who remained on the ground. Too, so that after a while he began to work on Issei's back, which was full of scratches and some bruises, since his body was very resistant, surprising him due to Issei's great physique. Inside the house. This should be enough, he said, placing a bandage on Issei's body that he couldn't stop appreciating. Issei. Thank you very much for the help. Said as he stood up and put his shirt back on. Don't worry, Mia asked me to do it. He said, refusing the thanks to leave the first aid kit in one place. Issei. So her name is Mia said somewhat thoughtfully as he remembered the woman knowing that she is somewhat strong by his standards. By the way, she said, drawing Issei's attention who looked at her waiting for a question or something. What are you doing here? Issei. Well, it's a bit complicated, but due to our bad luck and in a strange way we ended up at a great height from which we fell, and that's how we ended up here. He said, omitting some things but he wasn't lying. I understand, you must have a lot of bad luck. He said, already knowing what had happened. Let's leave it at that, at least you told me half the truth. I like you. He said and Musubi came to him. Musubi. Issei-san. Said arriving at the place together with Mia although Musubi was wearing a nice kimono. Look, they lent me a kimono. Well, you two look wonderful, he said as if nothing had happened. Issei. If it's true, they look very beautiful. He said going to where Mia was, who couldn't look away from Issei, which seemed strange to him. Sorry, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience we're causing you Mia-san. He said a little worried and she smiled elegantly. Dot. Mia. It's okay, I like to help people, my husband did the same. She said, lying to Issei. In fact, that shirt was my husband's. She said lying, something that both dragons noticed. Issei. I'm sorry that you lent me something so valuable to you, Mia-san. He said somewhat embarrassed. From the way you say it, I must assume that it is your husband. If your husband has already passed away she said, playing along. Issei. I'm really sorry said bowing, feeling bad for the woman, although the dragons would later tell him that it was a lie. Mia. Don't worry, it's been a long time, oh I should apologize, my name is Mia-sama. Said introducing herself and bowing. Issei. Nice to meet you Mia-san, I'm Haidu Issei. Said politely, bowing. Musubi. And I am Musubi. Said in the same way, giving his bow. I'm Kagari, nice to meet you. She said while leaning against the wall of the house. Issei. It's also a pleasure Kagari-san. Said in the same way and Musubi sniffed the place. Musubi. Sniff, sniff, sniff. I sniff a pleasant smell. It smells delicious. Said and Issei also sniffed a little, also noticing the rich aroma. Mia. Fufufu was preparing dinner, if you like, would you join us? Said in a kind manner. Issei. We don't want to take advantage of your kindness Mia-san. He said a little embarrassed until Musubi's belly growled. Heh <laughs> sorry, it seems that we will have to bother you a little Mia-san, but I promise to pay you. Dining room. In the end everyone went to the dining room where Mia served a delicious meal that gave a homely and familiar touch. Yusubi Issei. Bon appetit. They both set to start eating. Yusubi. Ah, it's good. Said very excitedly as she ate the first bite. Issei. If it's true this is very delicious. Said well he ate calmly and with a certain elegance that was instilled in him by Venelana in her manners classes that unfortunately stuck to him, surprising Mia and Kagari until another voice rang out. The place. Ah, I'm really hungry. She said, entering the place in her underwear, so Issei closed his eyes and only opened them slightly to take a bite of his food. Oh. Are there visitors? She said, but he couldn't look away from Issei. Bagari. Yuzum, because you always come out like that, I told you not to leave your room dressed like that. But I'm wearing panties, he said as if nothing had happened while looking at Issei who remained calm, even though he spoke to Mia. Issei. Excuse me Mia-san. Mia? Yes Issei-kun. Issei. Good thing it seems that no one here is pretending. Said and she understood. Mia. 
Oh well Issei Kun, what happens is that began to tell him what that house was. Issei. Or I see it's a guest house. Said understanding. Mia. Yes Issei Kun that is correct. Said politely. I am the landlady and they are my tenants. She said pointing to the two who were eating. Yuzum. However, in a cheap and ruined place like this, you will only find people with nothing better to do like us, you will practically always find empty rooms. Said winking at Issei who looked at her feeling a tug again. Mia. Ruined. Said with a kind smile while a purple aura surrounded the woman, which scared Yuzum. Yuzum? I didn't mean that, I was more like saying that there are places that require a bit of sprucing up, or maybe I should say that this place has an old atmosphere. Issei. Mind, there are always empty rooms in a home. He thought having an idea. Even if I'm a little old it's always good to have a roof over my head. Out of mind, Miya-san. He said calling the woman. I would like to live here if it's not too much trouble. I've been looking for a house, but they always reject me because they think I don't have money, but they never listen to me when I tell them that's not the case, he said, lowering his head, worrying Mia since she didn't like seeing him for some reason. So. Mia. Issei-kun, please raise your head. She said and he raised her head to look at Mia who was smiling. My husband was someone who would never reject anyone. She said and Issei thought he was a good man, and the two dragons met. They laughed a little. Welcome to Izumo Villa. He said, making Issei happy to finally have a nice place to live, and Yusubi was happy too. Yusubi. Issei-san. Said very happily, launching herself towards Issei who received her in a hug. Issei. It seems Musubi-chan that we already have a home. Said very happily. Musubi. It's great right? Said very excitedly, all under the happy side of Miya who didn't want Issei to leave, even though Kagari approached her. Issei. It's all thanks to you Musubi-chan. Said very happily while caressing the girl's head. Musubi. That's not true, you have tried very hard to say san Gagari. Mia, are you sure you're going to let them stay that easy? I ask, a little worried. Mia. If something deep inside me doesn't want to leave him, I believe that his arrival is the work of destiny, surely the gods have decided that they should be here, I don't care who they are, there are no reasons to reject them. Gagari. I see if you feel that way, I have nothing else to say. She said, leaving the place. Mia. Then how about we discuss the details? Issei. Of course. Said accepting with a smile. Hallway call. Bagari. Takami-san. Said answering her phone. What did you say? What was the last number? I understand for the moment I'll take a look, she said, cutting off the call. It seems like this will be very annoying. Hotel room. Reporter. On another topic regarding the recent explosion of greening in the botanical garden, the company responsible for the garden MBI has considered the case seriously, and she said, and Issei turned off the television. Issei. I can't expect much from that crazy man's company. He said a little tired. Well, let's review the finances. He said and took out some pieces of jewelry that he had saved. Tomorrow I will sell some and see how much a little of our capital is. Greg. It's a good idea by the way when you're going to tell your new girlfriend about us. Albion. If it would be good if you told him about us. Issei. I'll do it soon, but we have to wait for Hikari and Hibiki. Said so that they would understand since it wouldn't be good to explain it many times until a voice called him. Musubi. This Issei-san. Said, drawing Issei's attention. Issei. If something happens Musubi-chan. Said turning around and finding Musubi completely naked awakening Issei's sacred sword. Musubi. We ran out of shampoo. She said going to the bed where Issei was but she slipped and fell on him, throwing him onto the bed, and he instinctively hugged her. I'm sorry at a time like this you I didn't know that to say because of how innocent she was. Modesty is difficult. She said, holding her head as she didn't know what to do, and Issei only laughed a little at the girl's attitude. Issei. Haha, <laughs> calm down, everyone has things they are good at and things they are not good at. He said, caressing the girl's head for her enjoyment. Park. In the city park there were several people hanging around walking or relaxing in the area, although one Sekere was on a bench without much emotion or spirit. This is not a good place for girls like you so late at night, said a guy approaching the Sekere. I have nowhere to go. He said without much encouragement. You're one of the weird ones he said, making her look at him. You are an Ashikabi, but you are not mine, I felt it recently and I will find it. I don't care, I'll include you in my collection. Come. Next morning. Issei and Musubi started their day by buying some clothes and then eating at one of the local restaurants, and when they arrived at the hotel room, Musubi changed clothes into a schoolgirl that she had chosen to start cleaning the hotel room a little to move in. Dot. Issei. Well Musubi-chan, shall we go home? Said very happy to say that he finally had a house. Musubi. Let's go. 
She said very cheerfully while Issei carried some suitcases with the things she bought from Yusupi and for him. You're quite strong Issei-san. Issei. You are not far behind Musubi-chan. Musubi. That's because I'm the fighting type. Said very cheerfully while she also carried some suitcases with ease. Issei. So you're the close combat type, and Hikari and Hibiki are kind of the far combat type. Musubi. Yes apparently it is something like that. Said not knowing how to explain it. Issei. By the way, that's what you did when you created that tornado. Asked, somewhat curious about the energy it gave off. Musubi. That was a prayer. Said as if Issei knew. Issei. And what is that? Asked a little confused. Musubi. Millimeters Ito are words that you invoke when you are about to use a large amount of power, all Sekirei have their own prayers. Issei. Well I guess I'll ask Hibiki and Hikari later. He said to continue his walk and reach the entrance of his new home. Mind, this is where my new life begins together with Musubi and soon Hikari and Hibiki. He thought and a smile formed at the thought of a new life. Mia. Welcome and sorry for the delay. She said, coming out to greet the two young people. Please come in. Issei. We're home. Said with a smile and great joy as he said it, while well, Musubi and Mia also smiled happily at those words, so they began the tour. Mia. Your room will be 202, it has enough space for the four of us, and I hope to meet the other two very soon. She said and they just arrived at the room. Please come in. She said and Issei came in, seeming interesting and welcoming in his own way. Don't worry. It's pretty clean. Issei. Thank you very much Mia-san. Musubi. Issei-san. The suitcases don't fit. She said, trying to enter with the suitcases horizontally, which worried Issei a little because of how innocent and clumsy the girl was, so he helped the girl. Mia. Wow Issei-kun, you're pretty strong, so are you Musubi-chan, aren't you? Musubi. If Issei-san is very strong, he can resist very strong attacks, plus I am a fighting type Sekure. Said and Issei did not expect her to count so much. Mia. Fufufu, fu fu, you're very funny. She said, dismissing that. Anyway, when you finish settling in, please come down. Issei. It's okay and thank you Mia-san. He said and she just smiled to leave the room. You know Musubi-chan. She said calling the girl. Musubi. Yes Issei-san. Issei. There are things that you shouldn't tell so lightly that's why I hesitate a little to tell you some things. He said and she covered her mouth thinking that she had said a lot. Musubi. Sorry, I just got carried away. Said as if it were nothing. Issei. I'd better tell you someday not too soon. Said thinking that that would be the best. Musubi. Well, no problem. He said, drawing Issei's attention. No matter what my boss does to you, it will be fine because we will always be together no matter what happens, I will definitely protect you. He said, making Issei very happy, who smiled happily at that statement, although he did. Television man tried something he would be more than dead. Issei. Thank you very much Musubi-chan, but I will also protect you and make sure to make you very happy. He said with great affection in his words as he patted Musubi's head. Musubi. I will make you very happy to Issei-san. Said with a cute smile upon feeling Issei's warm touch. Issei. Let's get our things together, Musubi-chan. Musubi. Yes. Said very excitedly to open the bedroom window. Issei. By the way, Musubi-chan said, drawing the girl's attention, let's get along well from now on he said, taking the girl's hands, who smiled very happily. Musubi. If I say the same Issei-san. Said very happily. Unknown place. Sekirei number 88 and his Ashikabi in addition to Sekirei number 11 and number 12 Fufu, something tells me that he is my destined Ashikabi Fufufu, said a pretty girl who looked at everything she could and was looking for more information about Issei. Entrance of the house. Issei. Will Kagari-san come out? said behind the girl who did not sense his presence or approach. Pagari. If I must work. Mia. It seems like you're leaving early, I even had dinner ready for you. Said kindly. Pagari. Sorry, I'll eat later. He said a little embarrassed to kiss Mia's hand. See you later. He said goodbye to the group, and Mia looked at them. Mia. Kagari sand works at a host club. Said with a cute smile. Issei. I see, I hope it goes well for you. Said without showing much emotion since now Drake and Albion told him when someone was lying. Musubi. Host club. Issei. Well Musubi-chan is a service that you look for when you want a boy or girl to do something for you, you already know how to serve drinks or talk, that's the most common thing. He said so as not to tell the innocent Sekirei more things. Musubi. If it were you I would like you to do everything I want. Said very excited. Issei. I don't see why not later we can try it if you want, ask me whatever you want. He said thinking that I wouldn't ask him for anything perverted for something like that. Musubi. 
Yes. Said very excited. Mia. Dinner will be ready soon, so how about taking a bath? Said to both boys. I say. I think it's a very good idea. Yusubi. Yeah. A bath. She said very happily. For both of them to be guided to the bathroom. Wow what a big bathroom. This way we can get in together and I can do a good job washing your back she said, and Issei looked at her a little surprised. Issei. I guess we could but the truth is I would like to take a bath later. How about you use it first? He said, stroking the girl's head as he left the bathroom. Ah this place is very relaxing, but even if there is nothing supernatural here I must train. He said, and the two dragons nodded in agreement to begin a basic but effective training routine. Bathroom. Yusubi. Ah I wanted to wash Issei Sen's back said a little sadly as he immersed himself in the hot water, and a voice was heard in the place. Yuzum. Is there anyone inside? Said that girl from dinner. Ah you're one of the new girls. Yard. Issei. 497, 498, 499 500. Said finishing the first exercise. Ah this is quite simple now it seems that I have gotten quite strong it is possible that my injuries on my back have already disappeared. He said approaching where they fell this tree saved me from being worse, thank you very much, he said as he touched it, and it lit up lemon green. Causing an image of a little girl to come to him. Save me. Said the little girl while some tears fell from her eyes, and Issei looked at her with great concern. Bathroom. Yuzum. I'm Yuzum, room 203, nice to meet you. Said while she was in the tub and Yusubi was soaping her body. Yusubi. I'm Yusubi, please meet me. Said introducing himself in the same friendly way. Yuzum. Ah you're also a Sekere. A Sekere. She said a little excited. Look, see. Me too, she said, showing her back where she had the Sekere mark, surprising Musubi quite a bit. Yard. Issei. What was that? He said when he stopped touching the tree. Do you guys know what that was? He asked a little curious while looking at his hand. Greg. Connection no idea Ibo seems like it was like a bridge with one of your connections with your soul. Albion. Connection, yes, Issei, it seems that by touching that tree you were able to contact one of the Sekere who are linked to you. Issei. I also felt something like that when we fell from the sky. He said but a noise sounded alerting him. What's happening? He said, they hear the sound just like Mia. Bathroom. In the bathroom a confrontation began although it would be more one-sided since Musubi was the one attacking since Yuzum did not want to fight. Yuzum. Wait a second. Said moving away from the girl who was attacking her. Musubi. I'm ready. Said, attacking where Yuzum was before, who jumped to dodge. Yuzum. Listen to me for a second. Said trying to calm Yusubi down. Yusubi. Sekere number 88 fighting type Yusubi this is my first real battle. I will have little experience, but I will do my best. She said very excitedly and Yuzum tried to escape. Yuzum. Do your best. Said trying to flee the scene. Yusubi. Then I will attack. Said, launching himself into the attack. Yuzum cry out, calm down. She said, but immediately dodged a punch that broke the bathroom wall, and then a combo of blows. I won't stay here. She said running from the place, but not before taking a towel and being chased by Musubi who before going out I grab a towel for her. Yard. Issei, who remained in the courtyard wondering what was happening, was surprised when he saw a girl jump out of the window, breaking it until he saw her fall on the fence, and she also looked at him. Yuzum. Hey, you are the master of that girl, stop her. She said looking at Issei who didn't understand. I don't want to fight, she attacked me. She said jumping to Issei who caught her. Please stop her. She said while hugging Issei by the neck waiting for a response, although something inside her asked her to kiss him at that moment. Issei. I think I understand, calm her down. Said a little angry, understanding why Musubi was attacking her. Musubi. Ah get away from Issei-san. She shouted from the second floor, and Issei looked at her to see how she launched herself towards the floor below. Get away from Issei-san. Issei. Stop it Musubi-chan, why are you fighting, did she do something to you? Said a little angry. Yuzum. That, that. Said a little mockingly at how Issei scolded her. Musubi. Stay away from Issei-san. Said throwing a punch that Issei was ready to block, but the one who blocked it was Mia, and then launched an attack with her soup spoon. Mia. There you go. She said after the blow and Musubi rubbed her head because of the blow. Girls shouldn't run around dressed like that. She said calming Musubi. Musubi. Yes, I'm sorry. Said with tears falling from his head from the blow. Yuzum. Fufu, he got mad at you. Said mockingly, but Mia turned around. Mia. Yuzum sent you too. Said pointing at the girl who turned around. Yuzum. Well. Mia. I don't know what caused this, but I will not allow any type of violence in the vicinity of Izumo village, you understand. 
said and a Hanya mask appeared behind her, scaring Yuzum, surprising Issei while Musubi did not understand. Issei. I will still pay you for the damages. Said calmly although he was worried about the problems that Musubi could cause. Mia. You are very kind Issei-san, well, I leave, dinner will be ready very soon. She said saying goodbye to return to the house. Yuzum. Mia is scary when she's upset. Said watching her leave the place. Issei. I guess it's something interesting although I don't understand what he's laughing at. Said calmly and calmly since after meeting the Trahiksa, he lost his fear a little. Instruction. In the middle of construction, a guy who was not working was checking a message. Message. There's a wingless ekare in the botanical garden. Act quickly. You could be the one to give wings to the green girl. When the man read it he just smiled satisfied and looked towards the horizon. Night unknown place. Vegetation that grows extraordinarily fast for some reason something seems out of place, said a beautiful blonde woman who was looking towards a wooded area, and the wind was moving her hair. Hamura. So she's really locked in the plants. Said, drawing the girl's attention. Hamura. She said, very surprised. The fact that we are here shows how unlucky you are. She said, pointing at the girl. We will finish this today. You and me, who is stronger? She said ready to fight. Hamura. You see, I'm very busy, he said, launching an attack that created a cloud of dust that forced the blonde to close her eyes. Wait. Coward. She said to see that she was not there. Hamura. It would be better if you stopped wasting your time here and found a master. Said making the other girl angry. Hamura. He said while clenching his fist in anger, I won't allow it, there's no way I'll allow it. All Ashikabi are lower life forms. And to physically unite with one is before I let him take this body I will finish him off. Issei's dream. Issei opened his eyes in a place full of vegetation and sobs called him, so he began to follow them, finding that little girl he had seen a few hours ago. Issei. Can't you come down, little one? He said and she made some moans that responded. Calm down, everything's fine, come, I'll catch you. He said, stretching his hands up where the little girl was and she turned, jumping towards him who caught him in a fatherly manner. And protectively. I think you're fine now. What's your name, little one? I asked with a soft and serene voice. Kuukusano, he said timidly. Issei. What a nice name I'll call you Kuuchan. He said with a smile as he caressed the little girl's head, and she smiled very happily for the affection. Well, why were you crying? He asked, sitting in the grasses of the place while hugging her protectively. To the little one. Kusano. It's Kuu's fault, because Kuu was selfish and said she wanted to go out. He said and she lit up, moving away from Issei's embrace who didn't want to let her go. Save me, save me on chan she said, stretching her hand out to Issei and he ran for her. She. Issei. Ku-chan wait. Said trying to reach her. Kusano. Save me. Said much further away. Issei. Ku-chan. Said trying to reach her. Fourth night 202. Issei. Ku-ku-chan. Said in his sleep while another voice called him. Yusubi. Issei-san. Said trying to wake up Issei. Issei-san. He said waking up Issei and when he opened his eyes he found Musubi on top of him. Issei-san. Issei. Yes Musubi-chan, is something wrong? I asked a little confused. Musubi. You had a nightmare, are you okay? Asked a little worried. Issei. It wasn't a nightmare, it was a dream, it felt so real and. He didn't finish as he looked at his arms. Musubi. A dream? Asked a little confused. Issei. Yes. Said somewhat confused. Botanical garden. Hamura. The green barrier is still in position, if we don't do something quickly the people looking for it will come I understand. She said ending the call to look at the garden. Inside the garden. Kusano. Help me, save me on each end. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.